Hello and welcome, welcome to this course machinery fault diagnosis and signal processing. Today's topic is bearing fault diagnosis. Now this is a B project bearing fault diagnosis using acoustic signal analysis uh, for the year 2012-13. Now rotating machinery generally comprises of numerous components such as coupling, bearing, gearbox, shaft, uh, etc., etc. But out of these components, bearing is the most frequently damaged component uh, in the machine. From this uh, chart, we can see that uh, about 40 percent of the cases, the machine fails because of the bearing fault, whereas uh, uh, the other defects such as uh, worm breaks, misalignments, uh, coupling wear, uh, unbalance, then uh, leakages, they have a very uh, small contributions, but uh, most of the time or rather 40 percent of the time the machine fails because of the bearing failure. Now these are some of the terminology that we use uh, in the bearing. So bearing comprises of outer race, inner race, rolling element, cage, etc., etc. Now, uh, bearing fault classification. The faults are classified into single point defect and generalized roughness. So, a single point defect is defined as a single localized defect on the bearing component surface. Generalized uh, roughness corresponds to the situation where the condition of bearing surface has degraded considerably. two categories under which bearing faults are categorized. So single point uh, defect uh, which includes a small pit, small crack, whereas generalized roughness uh, is uh, the erosion, corrosion uh, at a large area. So uh, this is defect in the outer race, this is defect in the inner race, this is defect in a cage and a rolling element. So here you can see that the rolling element is broken. The cage, the function of the cage is to uh, keep all the rolling elements uh, at its seat so that uh, during operation uh, the rolling element does not run away from its seat. Now uh, the various uh, bearing components uh, failure percentage are depicted in this figure. So here we can say that inner race generally fails uh, 15 percent, outer race 23 percent, cage defect 35 percent and rolling element 27 percent. So from uh, this chart we can see that uh, the cage is one component of the bearing which frequently fails. So cage defect uh, is, is you can say a major uh, component which needs to be taken care. So in this uh, presentation uh, we will be dealing with the cage defect problem. Now uh, as we have discussed that uh, bearing comprises of uh, different components, but uh, to, to detect the exact location uh, of the defect in the bearing uh, we must have uh, the fundamental frequency knowledge of the bearing. And if you are knowing the physical dimensions of the bearing, then you can easily find out uh, uh, the fundamental frequencies of the bearing component uh, by using these formulas. So these are the formulas by which you can calculate the fundamental frequencies and every component of a bearing, they runs at their own characteristic fundamental frequencies. Now to detect uh, the bearing fault, uh, this is how an experimental setup is developed. So here you can see a prime mover as a motor, it transmits the power to a shaft. The shaft is driven uh, uh, by uh, a belt drive, then the shaft is supported at the two ends by two bearings uh, and uh, an accelerometer 
is placed on the bearing and uh, it is connected to lab view software by using uh, data equation set. Now these are the fundamental frequency calculations. Uh, so by knowing the speed and physical dimensions of the bearing you can easily find out the fundamental frequencies of the bearing. Now here uh, we are uh, checking two bearing defects, one is a cage defect uh, and second one is a outer raised defect. So cage defect is seeded in the bearing NTN P205, 204 bearing whereas the outer raised defect is seeded in the TRB 30210 bearing. So first we will see the cage defect. So here uh, you can see that uh, the cage of the bearing is damaged, there is no cage. So this is the healthy bearing uh, where the cage is intact and uh, uh, because of the presence of the cage, the rolling element uh, rotates at its seat. Now these are the dimensions of the NTN 204 bearings. Now by using those dimensions and the RPM, uh, we have calculated the characteristic frequencies and their harmonics uh, at 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, 7x and 8x. Uh, these harmonic frequencies are required because uh, sometimes the fault appears at its fundamental characteristic frequencies and uh, sometimes uh, it carried to higher frequency zone at their higher harmonics. Now these are the amplitudes uh, of uh, cage defect frequencies, uh, ball spinning frequencies, uh, outer race frequencies, inner race frequencies. Uh, this is for 1x, 2x, 3x and their averages. This is a signal uh, from a heavy bearing and this is a signal from a faulty bearing. Uh, the statistical parameters of uh, time signal, so these are the statistical parameters we are using that is RMS, standard deviation, variance, cold dosis, skewness and crest factor. So these values are for healthy bearing and for faulty bearing and when we compare the uh, time domain statistical parameters uh, between the healthy bearing and a faulty bearing then uh, uh, this is the comparison. The RMS values, variance, cortosis, skewness and crest factor. All the statistical time domain parameters shows upward movement in case of a faulty bearing. So that indicates that there is a presence of fault in the bearing uh, but the time domain analysis uh, can only detect the fault, it does not give the exact location of the fault. Uh, that is why uh, a further analysis is required. So all the value, values of time domain statistical parameters of the faulty bearing are showing upward swing as compared to the value of healthy bearing which shows the presence of fault in the bearing. Healthy bearing reading shows crest factor as 5.04 and faulty bearing shows crest factor as 5.94 which is in accordance with the theory. Similarly, cortosis values are also uh, for healthy bearing it shows 2.98 and that of faulty bearing as 3.24. Then uh, to detect the exact location of the fault, uh, so here uh, this is the frequency domain plot and when we compare the amplitudes at these characteristic frequencies. Uh, then uh, here we can see that uh, uh, the amplitude comparison at cage defect frequency in affected
the amplitude comparison at the ball spinning frequency uh, for defected and healthy bearing at 1x, 2x, 3x and 4x frequencies. So, out of the 4 fundamental frequencies, uh, uh, the cage defect frequency and ball spinning frequency shows uh, upward trend. So, we can say that uh, uh, there is a cage defect present in the bearing. This is a percentage increase in the amplitude in the defective bearing with respect to healthy bearing. So, the amplitude of the cage defect frequency has increased by 1082 percent, whereas ball spinning frequency is increased by 1718 percent, whereas uh, the outer race and inner race frequencies uh, does not doesn't show m much higher values. So, there is a large fluctuation in the amplitudes of the healthy and the cage defected bearing change of amplitude by 1082 percent and 1718 percent at, at cage defect and ball spinning respectively, whereas negligible change in the amplitude for outer race and inner race frequencies. Vibration signal analysis has an edge over the other fault detection techniques in the sense that it not only gives the presence and severity of the fault in the bearing, but also gives the exact location of the fault. Next we will detect the outer race frequency. So, by using the same methodology uh, which we have adopted for detecting the cage defect frequency, uh, we once again implement it to find out the outer race defect frequency also. So, here we have used uh, a taper roller bearing 30210 and we have seeded uh, the defect at its outer race. So, these are the time domain statistical parameters for healthy bearing and uh, the defective bearing. So, here uh, the prominent peak appears in a frequency domain plot at uh, the outer race frequency of uh, 254 hertz. So, which indicates that uh, there is a presence of outer race defect in the bearing. Uh, then we have increased the severity of the fault and uh, we have obtained uh, the time domain statistical parameters and uh, when we plotted these time domain statistical parameters, then we can see that the RMS values are increasing with the increase in the severity, kurtosis values are increasing and then decreasing uh, as we increase the severity, whereas crest factor and variance shows upward trend. So, uh, from uh, the results uh, during bearing condition monitoring the increase in the cortices value from if the crest factor deviates above 5, then defect may present in the bearing, this information is to be related with the advanced signal processing technique to underline the presence of cage defect in the bearing. Then the effect of cage defect, these investigations reveal that whether there is a cage defect in the bearing, it is associated with the ball spin frequency because the cage defect allows the rolling element of the bearing to deviate from the predetermined path. And uh, effect of cage defect in the bearing is seen at ball spinning frequency in the frequency domain spectrum. So, here not only a cage defect frequency is increased, but also ball spinning frequency is also increased uh, because uh, when the cage got broken, then the rolling element start uh, deviating from its path, and that is why ball spinning frequency also shows upward trend. Simplicity of parameters, the statistical measures could easily be understood by the maintenance technicians. If there is a need of further consultation and investigation, a detailed frequency based spectral technique could be applied by an expert. Inexpensive instrumentation, sensitivity of statistical parameters for diagnosis severity that we have justified. So, uh, this is how, this is the methodology for detecting uh, a bearing fault 
once you know the physical parameters of a bearing once you know the speed of uh, speed at which the bearing is running then you can easily find out the, the characteristic fundamental frequencies of the bearing and uh, with the knowledge of uh, fundamental frequencies uh, and the frequency domain plot uh, we can easily uh, detect the exact location of the bearing fault uh, by using this methodology so thank you very much thank you